Today I'm gonna be my first ever gaming PC, and since I'm an adult with bad spending habits, I might go a little bit above my budget. So I did a lot of research, found PC part picker, and after a lot of tutorials, a little bit of luck, and an empty wallet, I was ready to start building. For a few weeks, I scooped up everything I needed. Parts right now are super cheap, so people like you and me can build a very powerful PC. As I build, I have a counter on screen to see where I'm at. So I started with the motherboard, which is basically the brain of the PC, and it holds most of the components together. I chose the Axe Rock X570. It has everything I need, and I found it for a good price. After the motherboard was prepped, I installed the CPU. I went with the Ryzen 7 5800X3D. I chose this because I could run all the gaming and productivity I want, and it has a 15% gaming performance over the 5900X. I was pretty nervous installing this since it was my first time, but it was pretty straightforward. All I had to do was match the gold corner with the arrow on the motherboard and let gravity go to work, but don't push on it. If it doesn't fall into place, try again, because if one of those pins break, it's game over. After the CPU was in place, I installed the RAM. I picked up a 32 gig DDR4 kit running at 3200 MHz. For 20 extra bucks, I could've got RGB. That might be one of my upgrades later on. And I'll set this up by pushing down the second and the fourth slot. It's gonna be a little hard, but you know what's in when you hear a snap. Next, onto the storage. I got a Samsung 970 Evo Plus 2TB SSD. And I put it into place with the screw that comes with the motherboard. Now before we put the motherboard into the case, I installed the CPU cooler. I decided to scrub off the original thermal paste and try to apply my own. I couldn't decide what was the best pattern, so I applied as much as I can to the CPU and used a spatula to make sure I got it everywhere. Attaching the CPU fan took a lot longer than expected because it felt like I was going to break the CPU. But once I lashed it on, all that was left was to connect it to the motherboard. And just like that, we're finally ready to start working on the tower. For the case, I picked out a Thermaltake View 200TG Snow. It's a huge all-white case and it comes with three intake fans in the front and two 3.0 USB drives. And I was feeling pretty good at this point. If you haven't built the PC, I highly recommend it. It's very satisfying and a lot more fun than I thought it'd be. My brother compared it to Legos for adults. And now we can start working on the case. We can take out the side panels and add the I.O. shield. Now it's time for the extra fans. I got the AR120 RGB fans from Corsair. Since this case has so much open space, I decided to go for five intake fans and one exhaust. I don't know how much it's gonna affect the airflow in the case, but it shouldn't cause me too many problems. I cleaned up the wires and now I'm ready to put the motherboard in the case. And to do this, you have to place them on the standoffs. In my case, I had to add a standoff, but usually cases come with them pre-installed. So make sure you go to your manual to find out how many you need. With that done, we can take off the back panel, which is pretty easy to do because they're all thumb screws and that gives us easy access to the case cable. First, we're gonna connect the power to the USB. It can only go in one way since it has an arrow on one of the sides. Next, we're going to connect the audio cable, which is nicely labeled for us, and that's going to go in on the bottom left. And finally, to connect the power, reset, and light indicator. This took me a while to properly connect because they were so small, so I put up a diagram of how it was placed in the manual, but check your own for proper reference. For power supply, I got a non-modular Kratos M1 600 watt, and it comes with a 24-pin power cable, a PCI cable, a SATA cable, and a CPU power cable. To install the power supply, make sure the fan is facing down, and when you enter in the case, make sure all the screws are lined up properly. And this is something you don't want to mess with because one mistake with this and all your hard work would be for nothing so please go ahead and make sure all your parts are in this proper place i'm going to speed through this part and show you how i connected the power to the motherboard and the power to the cpu both have notches on one side so you can't attach them the wrong way with the cpu cable you're going to pull it through the back and attach it on the top left of the motherboard and now for my favorite part, the graphics card. I picked up the GeForce RTX 3060. And surprisingly, it handles gaming very well to the point where this is one of the most powerful GPUs for the price and combo with the CPU I won't have to upgrade for a very long time. Now to install the GPU, I like to find where I'm gonna place it. And when I push in the metal, I like to twist so it doesn't have a chance to scratch the motherboard. The reason I do this is because when you push the metal piece out, it's very close to the motherboard and this trick can prevent something bad from happening. A scratch to the motherboard could damage anything and this is the best way I found to prevent it. And we could just do the same thing for the second one and now you can throw those metal pieces away. And with that, we could go ahead and install our GPU. Once you push on the guard, it should slide in relatively easy and a clip on the back will snap shut once it's all the way in. Next, line up the GPU bracket with the slots you just took off and use those same screws to secure it back into place. To finish it off, I attached the PCIe cable to the GPU I only had to use one 8-pin connector, some of you might have to use both 8-pin connectors. Once everything is plugged in, our PC is completed, right? This is my first test of the PC and when I press the power button, half the lights weren't lighting up. <sighs> so I did what any person would do. I went through every nick and cranny of this PC, searching for the problem and came up with nothing. Lost and confused, I went online and found out I needed a hub to connect the power and the RGB of the extra fans. After a couple of days the package came in the mail, this meant I was finally ready to complete this build. To connect the fans, I got a cool moon controller for very cheap and made a decision to order new white fans to match the front. 
This was such a good purchase as the old fans stuck out like a sore thumb and these white Corsair fans fit together seamlessly. It already looks way better even without the RGB on. For the back, we can connect them all to the Cool Moon adapter. The instructions are pretty simple. Each fan has its own section to connect the power and RGB. You can even connect the CPU on it as well, but I decided to leave it out. With everything connected and put back into place, it's time for the last hurrah. All right, this is moment of truth to see if all the fans work. I... Yes. <laughs> Yes. Now all I had to do was install Windows and bought an activation key from mycdkey.com and after hours of work, I could finally use it. Wait a minute. Before we continue, I have to add some personality to this PC. Yeah, that's way better. And with that final piece, I can show you guys how the build came up. My first time building a PC, I think I did a pretty good job. I love using this PC. I've been pushing it to its limits with gaming or productivity. Hi, thank you, Professor. I enjoyed the match. And I've been able to do everything I want. Good match. No one so weak can hold the empire together. I love the way it came out. Seeing how much I get out of this build is just amazing. For anybody wondering about the user benchmark score, here it is. And I'm gonna make a lot more content, so I'd appreciate it. Subscribe. Peace.